Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to Author Story. I'm Alexander Lim, your host. And for this episode, I'm interviewing Felix Hartman, author of the book Dark Age, which is his debut novel. And for those of you following along who are interested, you can go over now to the Amazon link in the description below the video and check out or get a copy of Felix's book. So Felix, welcome to Author Story. It's fantastic having you with us as our guest. Hey, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. Cool. So Felix, please tell us a little about yourself and uh, your book. What's your author story? Wow. So I'm an, an immigrant that came to the U.S. back in 2008. Oh, cool. So this is not just my debut novel, but it's also a book that I wrote in my second language, which wow. you know, was quite the feat. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's been quite the ride. But I've been writing ever since I was in elementary school. So mm. ever since I was perhaps, you know, six years old. Mm -hmm. For me, writing was always my my earliest passion you know mm. when i was a little kid i would the very first thing i would do was i would rewrite the lord of the rings basically just wow. from memory i was trying to rewrite it and after a while i was like you know what that book is already published i think i should do my own thing okay so, <laughs> right what a concept so i started writing um the f first little book but it after like 10 pages you know granted i was an elementary school student so people just learned how to write. Right. So I wrote a couple pages and I loved storytelling, you know? Mm -hmm. But then a few years later, I started to switch again to new concept. So I went with a fantasy book this time. Okay. And then I wrote that fantasy book up to like, basically like 40,000 words, which wow. is you basically half a novel, you know, right, it's right. basically the, the length of, I don't know, The Alchemist or longer. Mm -hmm. But at that point I realized, damn, you know, I, I moved to America and I wrote that book in German. So I okay. realized that my German was getting really bad. So I thought, okay. you know what? I think I should probably switch to English. Okay. So then I changed the book for the third time. And that's when I started writing Dark Age. That was in 2012. I started writing mm. Dark Age, my first English language novel. And basically from there, then on it took off. You know, I really fell in love with A you know, the English language, right. um, the concept behind Dark Age, which is, you know, very personal, right. I guess, to a lot of my backgrounds, mm -hmm. which I guess we'll get to talk about. And after a year of writing and three years of editing, mm -hmm. I finally made the move to publish it. And things, since then, things have been taking off. Cool. Fantastic. You know, I, I must have admit, personally, I have more than passing interest in science fiction because uh, when I was younger, like in college, I was my main uh, authors were like Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac, Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, those guys. Mm -hmm. Who were your major literary influences when you were growing up? I mean, you mentioned Tolkien. That's definitely one. Yeah, um, Tolkien, uh, the, the Hobbit, that was one of the first books I ever read. Um, that's definitely a big influence. I mean, as a young kid, I would say, you know, stuff like Tolkien, um, T.A. Barron. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the funny thing is when I was a beginning writer, uh, I guess I'll give him some cred here. I sent him an email when I was just like a little German boy. I told okay. him that writing is a passion and he did respond to me. He wow. gave me some encouraging words, which was awesome. Nice. But beyond that, nowadays, um, I fell in love with a lot of literary fiction. Mm. So for me, um, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley oh, yes. is a big one. I love 1984. Mm -hmm. um, in general, like as you can see with those two, uh, and a lot of the books I like, I like a lot of dark themes. Right, uh, right. A lot of uh, books that really make you, qu like that have a really deep subtext that make you question a lot of things about humanity, like make you ch ch um, challenge some paradigms and just really make you think. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what really attracts me. And I feel like in the, in the modern era, there's fewer writers. So I usually tend to stick to a lot of classics I'm, for example, also a huge fan of Shakespeare. I would read okay. one play a month when I was younger. Cool. And I, you know, so there's a lot of those references in my books. And I think that's why I like to say that Dark Age is literary speculative fiction. So I'm trying to bring back some of the older styles right. that kind of have gone lost nowadays in the pursuit of more commercial fiction. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the older styles were definitely, there's something different about them back there, back then. Yeah. All right. So, Felix, I understand that you're still in college and that you're also a startup entrepreneur. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, you, so you, you must be you must be a pretty busy dude. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but I love it. I, I love the 
um, the I, the way I call it, and I've given talks about this, it's it's called dream diversity. You know, mm. I have I, I don't think people are made to just have one single passion, That's but rather cool. we have such like have a number of diverse passions. So for example, for me, it's writing and mm. it's leadership and business right. and it's politics. So instead of me saying yes to one dream and denying all the others, I say, you know what, bring it on. I'm going to try to do all these different things. And thus far it's worked. You know, so wow. for me, for example, I've had a long work day today. You know, I've ah. been in the office since 10 a.m. in the morning. Right, right. And then generally in the evening, maybe I, I take it, take off at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. I take two hours to get some writing done. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like I, I love writing, but mm -hmm. if I would have to write all day long for the rest of my life, I would probably hate it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> true, true. So, for me, it's it's rather an awesome escape, the writing, you know, being able to do a little bit of both. Right, cool. You know, get some creative time and get some, um, you know, working time. Yeah. Get some, there's so, so many parts of the brain that I lo love to engage, so I like to keep it diverse. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, why follow why follow just one dream if you can follow a dozen? Absolutely. Cool. So, next to the book, um, you know, with, for the benefit of those of our listeners who are not aware of what the book's all about, can you tell us what, it, well, what the book is all about without giving away too much? Okay. Yeah. So Dark Age tells the story of a young man called Adam who basically finds himself entangled in one of the most unusual post-apocalyptic settings. Hmm. It's a world that takes place in the future, but yet it's reminiscent of the past. Mm -hmm. So he lives in a small town that is ruled by a dogmatic tyrant hmm. who basically declared himself the new messiah, the right hand of God, hmm. with very, very strict rules um, that basically keep him from living life on his terms hmm. because, you know, he... He has a girl that he loves and he wants to stay with her, but the rules and the dictator basically force him to go out off to war for mm. 10 years of his life without okay. being able to return home. Right. So he wants to find out, he wants to change the system. He wants to overthrow the dictator. And in order to do so, he has to find out, find a way to do that. And that takes him on a long journey of truth finding. And it's the concept in the book, a lot of like dark light versus darkness, mm -hmm. right versus wrong, mm -hmm. rebel versus tyrant. Right. And it's not so much, you know, your typical feel good story of, you know, the, the, the good guy wins in the end, which, you know, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Right. But it's more so about seeing it, that everybody has their own side of the story. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes mm -hmm. you question, you know, what are the, what are the tyrants reasons for doing what he does and what, is the rebel's um, position for why he does the things he does. Right. It was a little bit inspired by, because when I started writing this, it was in 2012, uh -huh. and I was really involved in politics, and the Arab Spring was happening. So mm. there was tons of um, rebellions around the, uh, the the world with, right. you know, Middle East. Right. And I was doing research on it, and both sides had their own story for it. You know, right. the rebels said that, oh, it's this evil dictator. And mm. then the dictator said, these are terrorists. Right, right, right. So, you know, with with Dark Age, I really wanted to make people see like that every person has their own perspective for things. And that's something I guess I pride myself on with the novel mm. is that no character is just one sided. You know, right. every there's no bad guys and there's no good guys. Mm. Everybody has their own um perspective and i think you can really relate to a lot of them it kind of as one i guess one reviewer said on my uh, book is that you know I, dark age kind of tries to humanize the monsters which is really unique right okay cool well definitely i mean it's in that case it's definitely different from your round of the mill like the hero is uh the good guy and all good and bad guys all bad there are shades of gray in between yeah and i think people are kind of like craving for that nowadays more we see that that's the reason why stock age gets compared to game of thrones mm -hmm. we don't have much in common since game of thrones is more fantasy but mm -hmm. what we do have in common is that there's a lot more complexity mm -hmm. complexity to it you know every character has different shades and a lot of unexpected things happen people just like that that raw nature of humans because in over the past years i think literature has been very like watered down that there's mm. good guys there's bad guys but we're also complex and rich that i think that's what people really want to see and that's what dark has to offer too cool fantastic now i believe I, I think i read somewhere that you originally intend to make this as a video game with your brother what made you decide yes to, what made you decide to turn into a book rather than you know do a video game 
So, yeah, initially my, my brother is a developer. He's a programmer and has been doing it for years. Now right. he has his own development firm. Cool. Um, for me, it was, I, I think I was always the storyteller. I was not the, the programmer, you know? Mm -hmm. So the kind of, the way we split the roles was, hey, I make the storyboard, he does the programming. Right. But I got so deep into the storyboarding, uh, you know, into, I developed deeper, deeper and deeper. He hasn't done, gotten any programming done. Okay, so okay. at some point I was like, this this project isn't going anywhere, but I fell in love with that story. And I mm. just, it started off as something completely different, but it's kind of as, it's a, as if I was delving into a, into a concept and I realized, hey, there's a story there. There's a story that needs to be told mm -hmm. and a story that hasn't been told. Because, you know, like I said, I've been writing since I was in elementary school. Right. And all the time I would come up with story ideas and people would tell me, oh, so that's like X mm. or, oh, that sounds like this book or this sounds like this movie. Yeah, yeah. But thus far, and you know, I've, I've got over a hundred reviews now on across platforms. That comment has not come up so far. Mm -hmm. People have not been able to say, wow, this book is just like this mm -hmm. because, and this is rare, you know, it's, it's really something unique. Oh, um, yeah. How often do you find a post-apocalyptic story that, that takes place in the future? yet has a logical reason why it looks like the past. You know, the people are in, in a castle, basically. Right. So beyond the setting, you know, it's also like it's it's the mix of a really unique setting mixed with a really complex um, subject matter that involves both things like, you know, rebel versus tyrant, right. um, some theology, some, you, I, like I said, I love Shakespeare. So there's a lot of references to Shakespeare and that stuff. So it's okay. kind of like your modern day literary novel that is, has also an extreme adventure tale. Right. Cool. Fantastic. Okay. So you know, uh, this this book is it's like a dark theme. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not like uh, all sunny and bright at the end. What is it about dark themes that attracts you to them? That makes you want to you know tell stories based on these. Um. I think there's a lot more complexity and darkness or i think a lot of mm. uh, like th one of the final quotes in the book it, it's in part three i believe it's um what's the quote um darkness brings something like darkness brings truth so, okay the, I, i'm the author i should know but basically what it is is that here, there we go. Darkness reveals truths that no sun can bring to light. For inside mm. the heart of man resides a beast, only tamed by the shackles of the day. Mm. Um, I think when everything's light and happy, it, it's very superficial. Mm -hmm. I think all of us have um, a lot of more complexity, a lot more raw human emotion comes out when there's more darker themes. Mm. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I, I loved... Um, Frankenstein, which has a similar similar concepts in the sense oh, yeah. of you know the monster wasn't really evil. Right. Uh, it started off as a good a good thing basically, but then because people thought it was bad, it turned bad. So to me, um, you know, a lot of these dark themes allow us to delve deeper into the human psyche and allow us to um, evaluate so much more meaningful things than if it's just a happy small adventure tale you right. know because with for me writing is not just to entertain mm -hmm. that's that would be for me like a, a failed project mm -hmm. for me every single piece i write i want to um i want to make readers think i want them to relate it to their own life or to the real world and i want them to um really challenge their paradigms because we all have such in in a way and that applies to myself as well we all live in such very limited worldviews mm -hmm. that and you can try to debate it with somebody, but it generally doesn't work. The best way to make somebody think and to make them like expand their par paradigm is by giving them a story, by telling them a story and making them really immerse in it. And then they start to question it like, wow, I never saw it like this. Hmm. So if, if you take a deeper look at Dark Age, you know, there's references to all kinds of things. Um, as I said earlier, from um, politics to theology, even you small references that very few people have gotten like for example immigration mm -hmm. um which would be re very relevant to today with you know the age of donald trump uh when you look at the craig art um it once it and you know i usually don't give these things away but one time for example the guard commander Tarek makes a comment that they're the invisible hands that do all the things that nobody wants to do right yet they're hated for it right um it's kind of like you know immigration you know like um illegal immigration people people say it's a bad thing 
but nobody wants to do the things that illegal immigrants do, you know, so they have their place in society. Um, so basically for me, there is just so much more potential in telling a story that's, I guess, dark, but I think saying that it's dark is even like a, a misnomer in the sense that I don't think it's dark. I think more it's real, mm -hmm. you know, okay. to, to put it in better terms. It's, it's just more honest. I think that's the word, you know, it's, it's, it feels more real as if it could really happen. Right. Okay. I got that. Cool. So let's get a little bit into your process. Um, did you, how, how do you, how do you, how did you write this book? Like, did you spend, first spend like weeks researching it and fleshing it out before writing it out? Or did you just like go for it? You know, the heck with outlines, just write it out and let it grow organically. I would say this is because that was four years ago, but oh, okay. generally, generally, my, no, 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 no. Generally, my the way I go about it is I outline it, right? But in rough terms, I would say mm -hmm. the first third is always very thoroughly uh, outlined, and then it gets um, very more um, li light. The outline, in the sense that I know, hey, this is kind of the ending, or this is the general direction where it's heading, right? right. And then things come up as they go. Ah. Um, one big thing for authors is to realize that. The, your first outline or your first draft is probably not the way that your story will end up being. Mm. Because for me, there were such vast changes that happened with the story. Mm -hmm. Entire plot lines, they didn't exist in the first draft. Mm. Um, if you read the book, the whole, um, the whole interaction with the villagers did not exist in the first draft. His whole meeting with January and all that did not exist in the first draft. That was added out of... Um, the curiosity that in the first draft um he basically just killed one of the monsters and it was a girl and when i was thinking wow you know either i can make them just evil monsters right or i can question who is that girl what right. is her story so right. i decided to add a whole nother plot line where it goes about getting to know the villagers mm. um without giving away too much about the plot line but okay. basically um I think it's important for authors to know the beginning, know the end, and take things as they come. Okay. But I would always know at least two or three steps ahead. Mm -hmm. um, that way you can keep things concise and avoid too much, uh, you know, r r random anecdotes. Right. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much because you will have to edit and you'll be doing a lot of editing. <laughs> okay. I would say I personally did at least 12 to 15 rounds of editing. Wow. Um, you know, in the end, it was more uh, copy editing, but in, there there have been several rounds of where I went through cut out chapters, edit chapters, or right. just cut out whole paragraphs or sections. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, it's you've got to divorce yourself from the idea of thinking, oh, these lines, these lines are this like these lines need to be there. It's more what's the story I need to tell, right. and what's the best way to tell that story. Right. So. Sometimes, you know, like a small side plot, like, yeah, sure, it, 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 it fits in the story, it makes sense, but if, if it's not necessary for the story to be told, then right. you can cut it out, you know? Right. Okay, so, okay, cool, I got that. So, okay, it looks like it's, uh, from, from what I understand, it's sort of like you said, the outline, then everything else kind of grows, the middle, as you say, kind of grows organically based on, based on what comes right. out. Right, oh. right. I would mostly for, keep it, like, Go from the perspective, of, like what? Since I'm writing my next, the second book right now, um, it's a lot clear. You know, it's easier to explain the structure. So what I've done is, you know, I've outlined the first few chapters. I've made character sheets on the main characters, and I really dig into, you know, like you know, who are they? What are they like? What are their aspirations? You know, what are their maybe? What would be some childhood experiences that form them? You know, that shape them, and I just want to understand the characters. I want to understand the general plot line and then let the characters do what they do, you know? Right. And I think that creates an, a lot more authentic story than if you try to, what I've done in the past is to map out every single minutia and then force yourself to write it, even though after a while you might realize, I don't need to write this anymore. So right. be okay with straying away from your outline. Okay, cool. I got that. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, all right. That's definitely a good process right there. So, uh, Felix, you know, authors who write nonfiction books, even those who write novels, they, you know, they sometimes go on a journey as they do so. Has working on this book done that for you? Yeah, 
Um, I would definitely say so. I mean, for me, it was a four, it was a four year journey. Right. Um, so a lot of things happened in my life in that span. You know, from a, back then, I like an eleventh grader in high school to now my like last year in college. Obviously, like my, my life changed in that in, in those years. But writing is definitely a worthy journey, uh, be it fiction or nonfiction, mm -hmm. because it makes you a question the world a lot more. It makes you think more. It makes you research more. Right. It makes you a better writer. Um, you know, you become so much more eloquent at the English language. Um, but beyond that, I think it's also a very personal process because few people spend that much time by themselves because right. you just need to sit down and put in these hours of right. writing it. So it definitely creates a lot of patience. And, you know, I, I wouldn't give anything, you know, like, I would not want to like give that experience away because I know there's a lot of people that try to like you know oh just pay somebody and ghostwrite. Right, but right. I think it's giving up such an incredible experience um, because you grow through writing that story. And I don't think you know there's whenever I have conversations with people, there's so many like details I can and just stories I can tell about my story because it's mine. You right, know. Right. Okay, cool, fantastic. Now let me go a little bit in the sidebar, Felix, because I, I think this is the first time we've had someone. On an author story who's written out a book in English and English was their second language what was the experience for you writing out a book in a language that wasn't your primary language you know one that one was that with what you weren't brought up with I think it was probably the best the best practice I could have gotten okay um, because obviously so there's a lot of time passed since I wrote it and I published it right so I assume that the 2012 first draft or 2013 first draft um, probably had a lot worse English than it has now oh okay. but still in the process it made me research so you know I look up so many words and um, just learn them even now um, when I published it I found like one or two words that readers point out to me is like um, what was it I said the, the leash of the horse is like you don't say the leash of a horse it's the reins you know right, that's when right, right. The, the translator fell sh falls short okay <laughs> uh, letting you know but aside from that you know it's it's helped me really perfect the english language you know i'm not saying i'm perfect but right. obviously like for an immigrant i'm doing pretty good um so it's i wouldn't be afraid of it um, mm -hmm. i think it's 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 challenge that you should definitely accept if you because there's no better market to write in than the english language you know mm -hmm. everybody around the world can read english mm -hmm. i've got readers in every year from japan to i've had readers that hit me up on instagram from africa from right. the middle east right. that have ordered my books so right. if you can go for writing in english mm -hmm. and you know edit that editing is your best friend because you don't, you know, obviously don't want to embarrass yourself, mm -hmm. but it, it's a a great practice, and if you really master it, then it's the greatest investment you can make. Cool, fantastic. So, Felix, you mentioned that you're on your second book. Is this like the uh, second book in the in the series, like the second book that comes after Dark Age, or is this on a totally different subject? No, it's it's take it takes place in the same world oh, and okay. the same timeline, I guess. Okay. Um, the only ironic thing is. In a way, I published the middle portion of a story. Mm -hmm. um, Dark Age is, is a standalone. Mm -hmm. However, there's a prequel and then there's a sequel. Oh, okay. So what I'm writing right now is the prequel, which is okay. called Dawn of Man. Okay. And since it's a really rich story because uh, Dark Age, you know, it tells a post-apocalyptic story of, you know, the world in the future. Right. Uh, what a lot of readers are really curious about and even myself is how do we get there? Right. So Dawn of Man is going to be a trilogy that takes us from 2050 to about 21, uh, 2150. Mm -hmm. So it covers the years of basically our current day and age mm -hmm. to basically the fall of civilization, All which right. is really interesting. All so right. I'm working on the prequel right now, and once that is done, um, the sequel to Dark Age will happen, which is also with a different main character, mm -hmm. which is called Daybreak. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of books in that universe, okay. but since there's been a lot of interest in the universe, I think that will be welcomed. Cool. I guess uh, that's going to keep. I mean, sounds like this is going to keep you busy for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that there's there's a lot of writing projects in in that whole saga. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I enjoy it. It's 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 got since I'm writing some. You know, Dark Age takes place in 2150. Yeah. Dawn of Man takes place in 2050. Yeah. It doesn't get old because it's always a new setting. Yep. All right. Cool. 
So um, in the last few minutes of this interview, are there any like last words of wisdom you would like to share to inspire our listeners? Anything at all? Sure. Um, I mean, for A, for all the young writers out there, I would definitely encourage you to A, give it a shot with writing because I hear the word, I'm an aspiring writer a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of people message me on social media, say, oh, they're an aspiring writer and they want to write a book like me. Right. But, you know, the, I, I'm always curious, what does that word aspiring writer mean? Uh -huh. So to me, nowadays with self-publishing, you know, the power is really in your hands. Mm -hmm. So I say, you know, go, go ahead, take the time for yourself and finish that book mm -hmm. and then edit it and then put it out there. And s s some wise words, those don't come from me. They happen to come from the founder of LinkedIn that I read recently. Okay. And he said, if you're not embarrassed about the first version of your product, you put it out too late. Okay. So in a way that kind of applies to me because, you know, I took three years of editing. Mm. I could have published that book like two years ago, you know, okay. I could, could have gotten so much more experience in the meantime. I could have gotten feedback right. because there was some very, very valuable feedback that I got out of publishing the book. So I right. say, you know what, write, write your story, edit it as good as you can, put it out, get some feedback and get back to practicing and making it better. Mm. Um, so that's for the young writers out there. Stop telling yourself you're an aspiring writer and start acting like an actual writer because you, you the moment you publish something, you become a professional writer. All right. Now, um, as for readers, I, and that applies to everyone, I would hope that more people start reading mm. um, because I think as a society, we kind of become a, to a to point where reading is something you do in school and that mm. you're forced to do and it's bad. Right. But clearly with a lot of the things nowadays, you realize we would be a lot better off if everybody would read a little bit more because nowadays I read about four to five books a month and it wow. really helps broaden my spectrum. It's, you know, and like I said, I do a lot of things. I, I run a startup, I write books, I am a trader. I, if you follow me on social media, you know, I, I do a lot of things, but keeping always reading, you know, keeps my mind sharp and always makes me understand the world a little better and makes me break out of all the prejudices that we have and all the misconceptions that we have about the world. And, you know, read broad, read some nonfiction, read some fiction, because I think, you know, that kind of culture is what really makes us human and makes us more, you know, like, like they say in the book, you know, what makes us human is what makes us more than just the cattle on the lawn, you know? Um, right staying educated so i would hope that more people do that <laughs> and of course pick up my book oh of plug. course <laughs> definitely definitely <laughs> no problem with the plug there <laughs> okay so cool so in closing then the book is dark age our guest is the author felix hartman and you can check out his book on his website at darkagebook.com that's darkagebook one word dot com so felix thank you very much for your time thank you very much for being an author story it was a real privilege to have you with us as our guest. Thank you so much for interviewing me. Cool. It was a pleasure. All right. You're welcome. Of course, for those of you listening, if you want to own Felix's book, Dark Age, you can get it right now by going to the Amazon link in the description below the video. And if you'd like to follow our author interviews on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. So bye for now, everyone. I'll be back on Author Story next time with another inspiring author. <laughs>